Hi guys, welcome to another mass tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at two-dimensional vector magnitude. Now before we start, I'd just like to remind you of the competition that we're having to win £250 each month in 2021. Full details on how to enter will be discussed at the end of this video, so make sure you watch all the way through to the end. Now if we take a quick overview, a vector is a quantity which has a magnitude and a direction. So that's what distinguishes a vector from a two-dimensional standard coordinate system. Now the magnitude refers to the size of the vector and the direction of course refers to the movement of the vector. Now vectors can be expressed in what's known as component form uh, which express the coordinates in a different way. So what we have here is vectors can be expressed, uh, for example, we could have 3 and 4. Now that looks like a standard coordinate system. However, what we can also do is have it looking like this. We can stack them on top of each other. So these are both vector quantities. Now we can also get into the notation of i, j, and k. So we, this would be 3i plus 4j. Now we don't have a k because we don't have three dimensional vectors in this video, but this would be two dimensional. So there are three different ways in which we can express vectors. Now the quantity which has a magnitude by no direction is simply referred to as a scalar. So if there is no direction, say for example, the properties like that would be say mass. Mass doesn't need to have a direction. Mass is simply a scalar value. It has a certain size. Temperature. Temperature doesn't have to have a, a distance or a direction that it moves. It simply has a given scalar value. So temperature, the magnitude of temperature being if something is 10 degrees, then it's a lot colder than, say, something at 100 degrees. So there is a difference of magnitude, which is the size or a scalar. So that's the, the difference between a vector quantity and a non-vector quantity. Now, if we look at this in component form, then it can be written, as we said, the like this. So the number at the top refers to the distance in the x-axis, and the number on the bottom is the distance in the y-axis. So this would be the vector v, and this would be in component form. So that means that this would go 6 along and 2 up. And again, if we had a third value, then it would be um, in the z direction as well. But here we're only talking about two dimensions. So then the magnitude of a vector is essentially a spin on the Pythagoras theorem because the magnitude accounts for the hypotenuse or the summation of travel in both the x and y axis. So here what we're saying is that the distance between so say this is the origin here, then this is O, oh, this is X, and this is Y. Then what we are saying here is that the magnitude is essentially calculating the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Because we take the distance in the X axis plus the distance in the Y axis, square them, and then square root it. So essentially what we're trying to find is the value of C within the Pythagoras equation. And the magnitude is denoted by these two vertical lines. So when we see a vector with this type of notation, that refers to the magnitude. Now again, the magnitude, if this was three dimensions, you would have a C value in here as well. So this would be C squared. So again, it's just adding in that extra dimension to the system. So if we take a look at question one, it says determine the magnitude of vector u which was the 6 and the 2, in a third in its simplest form. So the first thing that we need to do is write down the equation for the magnitude. So that's going to be the square root of the value of a squared plus b squared. Now we'll substitute in our values of a and b, so 6 being the value of a and 2 being the value of b. Now we'll square them and add them together, so we'll have 36 plus 4, so we have then the square root of 40. Now, because we're dealing with a third, we need to try and get this as simple as possible because it asks us in its simplest form. So, we use the laws of thirds, so we need two numbers that will multiply together to give us 40, one of which can have a complete square root. 
So let's try root 4 and root 10, because we know what the square root of 4 is. That would give us 2, and this would be in its simplest form. So therefore, the magnitude of vector u is 2 root 10. And that's how you would go about determining the magnitude of any vector. It is as simple as that. You use this equation, you get your nomenclature around the correct way, and you basically apply Pythagoras if you're left with a third. Make sure you simplify it all the way through to as far as possible. So, now it is your turn. In order to qualify for the £250 prize giveaway each month in 2021, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment the correct answer to this question here. So all we want you to do is determine the magnitude of this vector A, so comment the answer and only valid subscribers with the correct answer will be entered into the draw. The more videos that you comment on, the more entries that you will have at the end of each month. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, leave any comments in the comments section below and we'll see you in the next video.